Hello everyone. Today we're going to be making this effect. Basically, when your mouse enters a certain area, the element that you want to animate will move towards your cursor. So I'm kind of zoomed in here, but you could see that it's like a button on a web page. And you can use any element that you want. It doesn't have to be a button. This is a really popular effect. You see it all the time on awards.com for menus, buttons, any element really. And there's a lot of ways to customize this. I'll show you a few of them. So I hope you guys are excited. Let's get straight into it. I go over the starter files. Basically we have a section and that's just to center this button, but it doesn't have to be centered. It can be anywhere on the page. And inside of that section, we have the button. And this can be any element you want. It could be a div, span, whatever you want to give that magnetic effect. For this tutorial, I'm just going to be using a basic button. For the CSS starter files, I did some basic styling. I imported pop-ins from Google Fonts. And the styling doesn't really matter. You can do it however you want. It'll still work for this tutorial. And now it's time for the JavaScript. First, we're going to make our utility functions. Often you see other people put it in a util file and they export them out. But for us, we're going to keep them in the same file since we're not planning to reuse this um, for other areas. If you are, you should um, probably um, export these somewhere else. So the first one I'm making is the classical lerp function or linear interp interpolation function. And it takes a current value, a target, and the factor or magnitude of how much you want to lerp. The next one, we need to get our mouse position. I'm going to do, I'm going to store the mouse position in a object and add a event listener on mouse move. I'm going to capture the event object, which has the mouse, pos uh, mouse position for us. And I'll just do mouse position dot x equals e dot page dot x and the same for y. And if I log this, mouse dot position dot x dot y. I'm going to my console here. You can see when I'm up here, it's zero zero and down here it updates the next function i'm going to create is the uh, calculate distance and this is just to calculate the distance between two points and you can implement this one however you want since there's a lot of ways to do it i'm just going to do it like this y1 x2 y2 and in here i'm going to return math.hype hype dot and whoops it should be math and I'll do x1 minus x2 and y1 minus y2. So this basically is just calculating the hypotenuse of a triangle, which is uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So basically this is your a, this is your b, and is it's taking the square root of all of that. And that's basically the same exact thing as the distance formula in this case. So you can do um, to the power, um, you know, to the square root of the whole thing if you wanted to, but I think this is a, a lot cleaner way to do it. So let's create our class of magnetic object. And then we're going to need a constructor and DOM element. And this is going to be the DOM element that we query select and pass through this constructor. So we need to grab that into a class variable. I just call them class variables because I used to be a, a Java developer. I'm not actually sure if that's the correct terminology for JavaScript. And just from experience, we're going to need the bounding client rec. Go to the developer Mozilla uh, docs and take a look at what get bounding client rec does. So basically, if you get the top, it's from the top to the element and from the left to the element. So this is going to be very helpful when we need to calculate the center because what you can also do is get the width of the element and the height. 
So if you want the center of this element, you're going to add the top and half of the element's height. And here, you're going to get the left, and you're going to add half of the element's width, and you'll get right into the center here. So this dot dom element dot get lining right collect. So now we can get the top of this and the left of it and calculate the center. The next thing we're going to need is our trigger area. And this is the distance in which we want our mouse to um, trigger the, the animation. I'm going to leave it at 200 pixels. But here you can change it to whatever you want. Maybe you only want it 50 pixels to activate. Um, I'm about 200, so it would be around here. The next thing we need is the interpolation factor. And this is what we're going to be pa um, passing in into our loop function. Again, you can play around with this to see how you want it to interact with your cursor. What we need to do is have the other factors for our lerping formula. And I'll just call this lerping um, data. And for the x value, there will be a current x value, a current, and a target. And same with the y. Y is going to have a current and a target as well. What I'm doing here is capturing the two values that lerping needs, a current position or a starting position, and going to a target position. And in this case, the current position is the current position of the button into its x and y coordinates, and the target is the mouse since it's moving towards our mouse. That'll be the target in x and y. And if we take a look at a Cartesian plane, this right now is going to be 0, 0. And let's say my mouse is right here. We're going to be lerping towards this target, which is my mouse. Now, we also want to make this responsive. So that's really simple to do. On resize, we can add an event listener, add event listener, resize, and in here this dot bound inclined rect equals this dot dom element so every time i resize the browser uh, this will trigger getting the new bound inclined rect because when i make the screen smaller obviously the top is going to get smaller or this way the left is going to get smaller and we need to call this in our constructor so it activates and I'll just do this dot resize. And now it will call that. Next thing we're going to need is a render function. And this will get our this will play our animation each frame. So request animation frame. And we want to call this render. So it keeps looping. And if we console.log this, we should see a bunch of highs in our console. And we don't because we didn't pass in any DOM element yet. So let's grab our button from our HTML equals document.query selector. Whoa, query selector. And it's called call to action button. So I'm getting the button with the class of this. And there's only one. So let's create a new magnetic object and pass that DOM element in. And I'll go through this DOM element and here. And now we have a problem here because I mistyped the period. And now it should work. And it still doesn't work because I have to call it the render function in the constructor. And now you can see high and a bunch of more highs. So this is going to make our um, lerping really smooth. So in this render function, the first thing we can do is calculate the distance from the mouse to the center. And this is how we will know if we're within 200 pixels or whatever you, you set your trigger area to. And I'm just going to call this um, const.distance from mouse to cursor. And I'm going to call our function that we made up here, calculate distance between two points and pass in the necessary parameters. So that will be mouse position dot x coordinate and mouse position, mouse position dot y coordinate. 
and then we need to pass to the center um, the center of this element so we can do that with this dot bounding client rect dot left plus this dot bounding client rect dot width divided by two and this is just the width of this element here plus the plus the left and it's giving us errors because I didn't add the second y coordinate either so let's get rid of this my prettier is formatting and I'm not really used to zooming in so much so it's kind of confusing so let's add the top and as well as the top this dot bounding client dot height divided by two and I realized that I have the equals here instead of plus so now if I console dot log distance from mouse to cursor it should work so down here you can see the distance is 500 from the center or 495 and as I get closer boom I'm at 198 so I'm now in the 200 range and it works around as well so when I'm up here it's about the same as if I'm down there and on the left as well awesome so the next thing we can do is determine if our mouse is actually in the trigger area and that's pretty simple it's just one if statement if the distance from the mouse to center mouse to center is within the trigger area or less than 200 uh, pixels then we can do some things and before we do something I want to make a target holder and what this is is uh, whoops this will hold the target position in X and Y coordinates and the reason I want this is so when the render loop calls again if I'm not in this area it'll set it back to zero zero and it'll loop back to zero zero so um, instead of just lagging back uh, to its original position it'll loop back or it'll without setting it back to zero zero it'll just stay in the position that I was lurping to after I leave so if I lurped here and I left it'll just stay here okay so let's set the target holder dot x holder dot x equals to the mouse position dot x and target holder dot y to the mouse position dot y now the problem here is x and y the mouse position starts here at zero zero and we want the center of this button to be zero zero so we can move our mouse around like so um, and we can fix that with some uh, math so let's do that right now so mouse position minus this dot bounding client rect dot left plus this dot bounding client dot width dot width divided by two and I actually have it up here for the other one so I'm just gonna copy and paste this and I'm gonna minus this entire thing and wrap that in parentheses and I don't know why I have my menu open here my bad and there we go so that's it and one thing that uh, we want to make it activate or in here so that's why I have this focus class and basically we'll just add it if we're in the range otherwise we'll take it out so let's go to here if we're in here let's for this DOM element class grab their class list and add focus and if I'm not in this range remove the class of focus And this should be working when I'm in the focus class comes in and when I'm out it doesn't now if you only want it to activate when you're on the button that's what this other thing here is for so we can just get rid of this and you can see it only activates when I'm in here and you can get rid of the JavaScript code as well but I want to keep it like this okay cool so the next thing we can do is update our lurping data our x coordinate up there and we want to set the target to the target holder dot x 
and the same for the Y. So let's do that. And I made a bug. Whoa. Sorry, I'm not used to my new computer yet. <laughs> so Y and Y. Then we can, for each of the values in the lerping data, we can call the lerping function. So for const item in this style lerping data, we're going to do this style lerping data and item dot current equals lerp. And I think I called it lerp. Yeah, I didn't. I called it lerp. So we're calling the lerp function and we're passing in our values. So this dot lerping item lerping data data um, item dot current and then we're lerping to the target lerping data item dot target this dot target and then we want our interpolation factor interpolation factor um, yeah awesome so it saves there and it's reformatting and I'm going to close my menu back so I have some more space. And then finally, we can do the translation or the transform on each frame. So this dot DOM element dot style dot transform equals uh, string literal translate. And I'm going to do this dot lerping data x dot current and I need pixels after this and then I'll do the same for the y so I'm going to copy and paste this for the y and now it should work and saying it's not found because this needs to be a, a, a string and let's see if that works and it doesn't work and the reason this doesn't work is because up here in my lerp function I didn't return anything so now it should work yeah it works so what I wanted to do was not have this and if you don't have this you don't need the return so it's up to you I, pr I actually prefer the return so you can see it still works and I'm just gonna undo those changes because I actually like the return uh, syntax better. It makes more, a little more sense to me. So as you can see, it goes a little fast. And the reason for that is I, I'm logging the holder here. Our target, it's going all the way to our X, right? And our Y. That's why it's, um, it's going so fast. So we can fix that by simply changing it or factoring it by multiplying it by 0.3 or whatever value you want you can play around with it to change out how much of a translate that you actually want it to translate and now you can see it doesn't go as far it only goes 30 percent of the way to our target and that's more that's more like it and you can change the range the interpolation factor so a lot you can do now there's even more you can do instead of using a button you can put another div um, you can make it a div and have another div inside and give the one inside some parallax by just uh, changing the interpolation factor you can make this translate uh, 3d and add a rotation here um, a rotation value that changes so you can have it 3d as well there's a lot you can do it's a really popular effect applied to anything and I hope you guys are uh, I hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching.